Hello, Chill Computer Guy. We're here in Bitwig Studio. Today we are going to talk about audio. Editing audio in Bitwig Studio. Now there's a lot of little small little details, caveats if you will, make it a little confusing for the new user or even the user has been with Bitwig Studio for a while. There's a few details that really really help with the understanding of the program. So we're going to start out here, we're going to open up the browser, we're going to go over to the samples here, and we're going to go to Splice. Now if you haven't checked out Splice, you got to check out Splice, splice.com. In this particular website, what you do is you pay a flat fee and you're allotted a certain amount of samples per month. So it's like $7.99 for like 100 samples and, and it goes up from there. You can get up to 600 samples, I think, for like 20 bucks a month. So that way you're only getting the samples you want as opposed to you know spending 20 30 bucks on this bloated sample pack which you're not going to use a lot of that content they're doing a thing with serum right now by x for records and you can actually pay them uh, it's like a ten dollars a month 19 months and you own it no interest it gives you a full license definitely check out splice.com it's a very very unique go there for all your samples they have everything and it's categorized and it's done in a very organized way so check it out we're going to go to the, uh, you can drag this out so you can see. We got Baker Brothers Funk Sessions Volume 3. This is subdivided into drum fills and drum loops. We're going to actually go into drum fills. Make sure and uh, turn on our preview there and we'll check some of these out. Unbelievable. Just great sound and samples here. All right, we're going to check this one out. Now, right here, it's going to say uh, the BPM is going to be listed in the title of the sample. So what you want to do is go ahead and set your, uh, your BPM to the same uh, beats per minute as the sample. Now one of the first little detailed or caveat, one of them is if you drag this out, if you drag it into the arranger and then you double click it, you'll see that it brought the audio in, just the audio. Okay, I'm gonna control Z that. Now you can also drag that over to the plane where you would put your instrument and effects. If you drop it there, what it's going to do is it's actually going to put it into a sampler. And then once it's in the sampler, then you can, you know, manipulate that. You can loop it. You can do whatever you, you want with it there. So you have all the, uh, the options of having this in a sampler. And then, of course, if you double click on here, you create a MIDI clip and then you have just your uh, MIDI note laying like you would any normal instrument. And so that's if you drag it all the way over. We're going to go ahead and delete that. But what we're going to do is we're going to actually drag this out into the arranger so you can actually see the audio as it is. We're going to go ahead and close the browser here. And something that I do recommend actually is uh, on the arranger you have the option to do either a wide track or a narrow track. And my personal preference is the narrow track. I really like the narrow track. If you get a bunch of these wide tracks in here, it just kind of looks cluttered and messy. And it's kind of, you know, it's a good reference point if you want to open them up. But something I wish you could do is actually drag these out. I know if you put automation in here, you can drag your automation out, which is really cool, you know. But you can't really drag your instrument track out, which is something that I'll probably, they'll probably change in a future update, I would imagine. So let's go back to just the narrow track here. Let's go ahead and turn off that automation. And if we double click here, what it will do is it will stretch it out to the full length of the editor. That way you can see the entire loop. If you're, you know, severely zoomed in, to get back to your full loop, you just double click it and it will automatically go back. We're going to turn layer mode off. So when neither one of these are highlighted, that means we're in track mode. In other words, this particular header right here represents exactly what's going on in the track. Now if I turn on clip mode, which is this uh, little car door here, then it's going to open up clip mode. Now with clip mode you have your, your in and out points and you can uh, adjust those. And then you also have your, your event, your gain, your pan, your pitch, your onsets, and your stretch. So this is, pr this is the best place to really do your editing is when you're in clip mode um, because whatever you affect down here is going to affect, as I reduce the size of the loop, 
you will see little lines show up up here. So now you have three bars of this particular loop right here, wherever the loop marker is at. So if you were to play this now in the arranger, you have three bars of that loop. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and stretch this out to four bars just so you can see that there is a loop going on there. So if I go back to here and I stretch this out, you will see there's less divisions now. But an important note is when this is highlighted, you are in clip mode. So if you make adjustments down here, those adjustments are going to be looped in track mode. If you go back to track mode, you can see this is exactly what is going on in your arrange view. This arrange clip is the exact same as your track clip. If you go back into clip mode and you stretch this out again, and then you go, you uh, you turn that off, which enables track mode again, you will see now your, your loop is cut right there. So that's a very, very important thing to understand is when you're editing your audio, there is a layered mode, there's clip mode, which is just basically affecting, that's where you set your loop, you know, and then if you turn that off, then you're in track mode. So your loop is now reflecting in your track mode right here. Now another thing about this is, let's go back to clip mode, is when you click on the loop marker, you get these options here. Now if you click on the clip header, you get completely different options. Very important to understand. Clip marker, and then you have the clip header. So two totally different options, very important to understand that. Now if we go back into the track mode here, same thing. You have your clip header, which has different options than your actual track. This is now your track header. So there's your loop marker, that's your clip header, and then if you go over to here, this is your track header, and then this is your clip header. So it's a little confusing. Now with your layered mode, if we were to duplicate this, you know, and then go into layered, yeah, you have to be in track mode to see the layered editing. That's super important. Okay, so let's go back into uh, the clip mode, and you can see I'm going to go ahead and uh, stretch my uh, loop marker out. Um, now the clip mode is really where you can get a lot of work done here. I'm going to go ahead and shorten this down and, uh, and hit play here. Okay. Now if I click on the clip header, you can see it gives me the options. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, click on this onset button. And what this is doing is it's actually pushing the clip forward by one onset. And this is a really good way to get some variation. And so you can get quite a bit of variation but basically what this does is it moves the clip over by one onset. And then of course you can control these onsets. You can highlight them, you can delete them, you can move them, you know, if you want to move this over, you know, and then if we were to, uh, to do this again, it's going to move over by that large amount. So super powerful. Now another thing about this is when in clip mode, you can split at the onsets. Like I say, you can move, you can delete, you can even add a onset. If you just double click, you'll add an onset there. And so you do have a lot of power here in clip mode. This is really where you can edit your loop and really get a lot of different variation and a lot of different uh, you know, this is kind of where the ideas are, are made down here. This is where the hooks are made often. If you bring a clip in here and you really start manipulating it, you'll find something that really, really hits. 
and then you just basically cut it out and then put it in your track and so when in clip mode you can really do a lot now let's say we wanted to take this clip and we wanted to chop it up and throw it in either a drum rack or a drum machine or a multi sampler or something like that now there's several ways to do that um, one of them is to go into the arranger and right click and you have your options there now if you're down here you'll see if I right click on the loop marker I don't have those options if I right click on the clip header I don't have those options but if we go into track mode which is when both of these are off you'll see I have the option right here because remember this right here which is the track header is the exact same as this up here the exact same thing so if I affect something here it's going to affect it there those are the exact same things once we go into clip mode then we are just looking at the loop marker so if I if I stretch out this loop marker it's going to affect the loop up here in the arranger that's another super important point now let's talk about slicing to the drum machine or the multi sampler now there's a couple ways to do that like I was just saying but you'll see this uh, menu here this is the events the gain we can control the gain either plus or minus 18 DB we can do a pan a right left we can pitch uh, we can get 12 semitones so this is an octave one or two octaves up or down and then onsets now onsets is where we want to be now you can see our onsets are relative to where our loop marker is so I'm going to actually stretch this out all the way and I'm going to get rid of a bunch of these onsets here and there you see so we have basically one two three four five six if we slice this up we're gonna slice it up into about seven pieces or so now there's a couple of things before you slice this up you want to uh, under this mode right here you want to make sure on the onsets that you turn this off that's a very important thing what this is doing is it's it's actually putting a, a slight fade at the beginning and the end of each onset and this you do not want this is gonna affect the attack of your snare drum so you definitely want to turn this off and then you want to be in track mode in other words both these are turned off and if you right click here and you go bounce to drum machine or slice to drum machine you're gonna see this thing right here this dialog box now the very first thing you want to do with this dialog box is go slice raw instantly go to slice raw you need to put this on onsets so now you have eight slices which if you remember earlier we counted and there was about eight slices there so you hit OK and now it creates a track with a drum machine in there and then if you double click on that you'll see all of our samples are right there okay so what it did is it took the audio loop and it put it into a sampler and by slight it basically took the onsets and now the onsets have marked the in and out point of each individual sample now this is very similar to uh, to the Rex loop player if you're familiar with propeller head reason it's a very similar thing like I say there's a lot of little tiny details that you must understand before you start working with audio or you're gonna get all confused um, when you drag your audio in if you drag it all the way to the left it will put it into a sampler if you drag it over to the arranger it will just put it in like normal audio in the arranger now once you're there you have the option to go into layer mode which you can select multiple layers you have the option to go into clip mode where you can set an in and out point and then once you set your in and out point that will be reflected in your arranger you can see those little lines represent where the loop is going to start over so working with audio is it's a it's a little complicated but you have to understand the little details you have to understand those little caveats those little details once you understand those little details bitwig is very very powerful for audio editing uh, you mainly have to understand the difference between being in clip mode and in track mode and you have to also understand the fact that when you click on the track header it's going to give you different options than clip header beautiful waveforms um, just absolutely stunning waveforms uh, stunning audio quality and stunning tools to get the audio exactly how you want it the ability to just throw your audio into your arranger go into clip mode uh, set up your loop marker start slicing start pitching stuff and instantly end up with with a hook out of just a simple little you know three second sample is, is pretty powerful pretty magical and it's why Bitwig Studio once it's understood 
you have to take the time to understand some of those little details, some of those little caveats. And once you understand those, you realize how powerful of a DAW it is and why I think it is the future. Anyway, this is Chill Computer Guy. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. We'll be back next week and we'll have something more for you. Thanks again now.